Sometimes when we want quick answers, the last thing we want is to sit through a 20 minute video uh, or read a thousand word blog post to get to something that would have been easily explained in two or three minutes. So I've decided to start a new segment called Quick FAQ, which you can get many burning questions answered in a short amount of time, or maybe jump to the question that you want answered in two minutes, or share the link to anyone that needs a quick answer that you're too lazy to reply to. As always, the list of FAQ for the show are in the descriptions below. And like I said, you can jump straight to the questions if you like. Today's FAQ will be around the topic of expensive versus mid-range versus cheap sand or NAS storage. But before that, a quick definition of expensive, medium and cheap. Expensive storage systems in my definition are generally the big name brands and enterprise models such as the Dell EMC Power Maxes or V Maxes, um, the Hitachi Vantara G1000 series type devices. Dell EMC HPE and others have also a range of mid-market storage such as the Unity, um, Nimble and Tripar. I will classify them as mid-price and in the cheap category we have the likes of Synology, QNAP, QSAN or whatever you have in that space. So let's get straight to the first question. There used to be a massive difference between the expensive versus the mid-range systems but these days the medium price have benefited greatly from the trickle-down effect and oftentimes they, it overlaps greatly with their expensive boxes as well. So between the expensive and the medium price, I would say the difference is marginal. Having said that, cheap category though is where we often find a major difference. Sometimes the gap is almost night and day if you ask me. Is that gap narrowing somewhat depending on which vendor you're speaking to? But the variance just between these cheap vendors themselves are extremely stark. Usually, in my observations, the difference is often around scalability and licensing. When I talk about scalability, we are often talking about how many drive slots or how many CPUs, etc, etc. But like I mentioned earlier, the lines are blurring between the mid-end and the high-end boxes. Sometimes you'll find medium price boxes equal in terms of scale compared to the expensive boxes. From feature and function perspective, it is largely similar. You may get one or two unique features, but as a whole, not much. High-end expensive boxes are sometimes licensed by capacity as well, while medium price systems are licensed by feature regardless of how much capacity you have. But how about medium and cheap boxes? I've noticed that with cheap systems, much of the software stack on the storage system are often based off a Linux kernel of sorts. It may have a nice fancy GUI to front it, but underlying it, sometimes there isn't a whole lot of innovation around it. I know I'm generalizing, some do actually have some smart software, but it's often based off a flavor of open source. Nonetheless, it gets the job done. This is very different from an expensive or medium price system where most R&D are in-house and built off some proprietary code. This allows flexibility when it comes to the need to build new feature or fix a bug or etc. For cheap systems, because of its openness, you will realize that the ecosystem and community is often very strong. And generally, you have tons of plugins and integrations with various applications or software. But bear in mind, much of it is really best effort support or community supported. Mid-price systems like its expensive systems counterpart often are tested against common enterprise applications and have a fairly stringent support matrix on the other hand. I've had customers come to me before to say, hey, the price of two mid-range systems is still lower than an expensive system. So two or three, does it make up for one expensive system? If you're talking purely about scale, then yes, generally it's okay to get multiple mid-price systems to make up a highly scalable expensive system. But bear in mind, multiple systems could potentially mean a little bit more diligence in juggling and managing different pools of resources. The larger system provides you a single management because of its ability to scale. But then again, these days, management tools are getting a lot more elaborate uh, and usable, which makes qu quick work of, you know, siloed resources. Some may disagree, but I'm inclined to say, yes, multiple systems or medium systems do make up for a very large expensive system, barring a few outlying use cases. Um, I don't necessarily think it's bad per se 
for example, a USB thumb drive can store a whole bunch of files and keep it safe. In the same way, you can do the same for a very expensive storage system. It's uh, very use case dependent. For example, a Synology type NAS system today comes with all sorts of capability with zero licensing costs, from replication to snapshots to Dropbox license capability. And just by feature count alone, and if you're looking for an all-in-one box, nobody can beat a cheap system. But having said that, many feature doesn't always mean that all of them are reliable or usable. I like to think that cheap systems have their place, which I'll discuss a little more in my next FAQ. I'm a little indifferent about this. The reliability between expensive and mid-range, I'll say are comparable and oftentimes negligible. I'll put it out there to say it is similar. Oftentimes, the components used such as drives are similar type of drives used in both high-end and mid-range systems. But as for cheap systems, oftentimes some may consume what we call consumer-grade hard drives instead of enterprise drives. There is a perception that consumer drives don't last as long, but as technology improved, consumer drives are generally pretty good for wear these days. You can Google around and you will notice that consumer drives, while still lack endurance compared to enterprise drive, but it is a very, very marginal difference. You of course pay a lot more for enterprise drive that often don't add up to, you know, even multiple consumer drives. I think more important thing to note about reliability is the supportability aspect of the storage. Expensive systems generally have high level of technical support if you need it, similar to mid-range systems, but can you expect the same with cheap systems though? In short, from a hardware and software perspective, enterprise systems do have a slight edge of being more reliable, just based on the pure virtue of it having strong support backing it up. Same advice I give every time. Every vendor will sell you a box that is one size fits all or claims to be one size fits all. If you want a one size fits all type storage, that is definitely doable if you have unlimited budget. But I'm guessing not many of us have that luxury. So if you're a small business or an enterprise that needs to store data cheaply, just some file sharing, basic disaster recovery built in, look no further than cheap enterprise or cheap storage offerings in the market. These boxes are highly capable with good enough features that will satisfy most if not all your needs. Most of which are also certified to run VMware or Hyper-V workloads. Does that mean large enterprise should never consider cheap storage? Not necessarily. If you need a mountain load of storage cheaply, say for example for um, staging requirements, for migration, uh, long-term archival, backup targets or any less critical workloads, these systems can provide you a crazy bang for your buck and it's definitely worth the consideration. As for general purpose, enterprise workloads and everything else in between, frankly, I'm with the personal opinion that many mid-range systems are more than sufficient to do the job today. Don't be fooled by the marketing gimmick of 5 million IOPS, 10 million IOPS on the expensive high-end stuff. It is unlikely your workload is remotely at that level. Assuming if you did have 5 million IOPS, the last thing you want it is to being served by a single SAN storage. You probably want to kind of space it out with a multiple storage system. I know I have by no means covered extensively all the FAQ on this topic. I will consider this potentially as part one of many. And as always, I'm happy to take your questions in the comments below and maybe answer them in my next FAQ. Hopefully I've given you some quick answers around this topic today. Uh, do subscribe and like the video if it makes sense and I'll see you guys next time.